Hey, welcome back to Werewolf the Apocalypse Heart of the Forest. Uh, last time we left off, I believe, was chapter three we just finished. I uh, have a bit of a head cold, my throat is sore, so we'll have to see how this goes. Let's continue on here. Lost in the Woods. morning smelled of fur, earth, and the forest, over the gentle snoring that filled the warm space. Under the low-hanging branch of an old spruce tree, I heard a squirrel. I was hungry. I went outside. Stepping over the sleeping forms, I made my way outside. Alone, hiding in the tall grass, I sniffed around. The sky was bright, and the forest around me was dark. And full of interesting smells, high in the trees, birds yelled about status, sex, and violence. Wow. <coughs> Sounds like a night in New York City. Let me start to come back. Something opened in my mind, and memories started flooding back. The fight, the gunshot, the strange dream about being a werewolf, a creature stirred and bushy bushes nearby. A tall, dark silhouette. A strangely familiar smell. Tensed up. I tensed up and watched the human as they looked around. Maya, there you are, they said as if they noticed me. It was time to get out of there. I spasmed. Suddenly a feeling like a cramp or spasm surged through me and everything changed. I was homid, the human form. My body started resetting itself to the familiar shape and it hurt. Bones broke and fused again, muscles and sinews moved under my skin. I cried and thrashed. Then, panting and sweaty, I was homid again. I hit the ground with my bare ass, colors exploded. The morning breeze suddenly became cold and I shivered. Okay, so homids are a kind of werewolf. Oh, they're the human form of werewolf. Let's just make that very clear. See if I can find out the character sheet. Well, I don't know. Yeah, doesn't say much about it. Confused, I looked at the person approaching me. <coughs> We've prepared new clothes for you, Olga handed me a bundle. She took out of her backpack. <coughs> Better stay human for a while. They won't survive the change. Not until Lisa deems that you're worthy to learn the right. I snatched the bundle and started putting the clothes on. Sturdy but comfortable boots, cargo pants, and a green hoodie. They fit perfectly. <clears throat> I thought about the previous night when I was raging through the forest, about how differently I experienced the world through the wolf senses, and about the discomfort and confusion of changing shape. There was no denying it, I was no longer human. It was all their fault. Was I in trouble with the law, or I appreciated the help? <coughs> there was a murder last night, I said anxiously. What if they find my DNA at the crime scene? We'll take care of that. Human laws aren't as relevant for you anymore. We just stood there for a moment in silence. I was wondering how one usually learned that they were a werewolf. But how come nobody know about werewolf? It doesn't make any sense, it suddenly struck me. How come nobody knows werewolves exist? He protects the veil, was the answer. It's no easy to convince humans that supernatural doesn't exist. 
They already want to believe that, and the delirium helps. Okay, so the veil is their version of the masquerade from Vampire the Masquerade. You mean delirium as in the medical condition, I asked, remembering something I'd read about acute confusional states? You'll have to ask Pat for that, but the gist of it is that humans are incapable of remembering they saw a crinos. She laughed. They panic, turn away, and instantly forget every time. Okay. So the Krenos is the wolf form, and the other one is our human form. Then I realized something. Then I realized something important. The wolves had awoken. At some point, the rest of the party had awoken and joined us. The clearing was full of wolves. The wolves were closing in on me. I knew my next decision would have serious consequences. Denial, escape, or acceptance and cooperation. Well, I don't see how we could escape. I mean, we're a werewolf. You can't really run from it. The headless body was heavy. They said that as my first kill was mine burdened, it was my duty to take it to the barrows. I didn't want to do it, I didn't kill him. I got my shit together, that's the way you roll. Clamp for your mess. I got my shit together, lifted the corpse, and threw it over my shoulder. We are Garu, and when we rage, people die. Olga stood by my side. He had it coming. She accompanied me, carrying the severed head in a bag. The others stayed behind, covering the tracks. <coughs> didn't accept that it killed someone. Focus on the walk. I didn't want to talk or think for that matter, not only about the person I was carrying, or rather trying to carry. It was just a thing. I needed transport from point A to point B, that was it. getting more tired and more sweaty with every step. I changed. Oh, this is interesting. Very sweaty to me. Grinos is a war form with his killing machine. He's in subtle notice. His power. Monstrous wolf smart fast. Absolutely scary lupus. His wolf form is just a handle. This Glabro was the one to go with. I was Glabro, the near human form. The pain was stronger than I'd ever imagined. I felt my muscles spasm as they rearranged themselves. My jaw cracked. My mouth filled with blood. I clenched my fists, claws, and drove in my palms. I screamed. When I rose, panting and sweaty, I was more than human. I was Glabro, wolfish, scary, and strong. It hurt. The world shifted. Not much, but enough. I felt my teeth get sharper and muscles stronger. I picked up the body. It was a lot lighter. We went on. At some point, I realized we weren't alone. There were two shapes in the bushes on either side of the road. Animals. One big and gray, the other small, nimble, and white. Ah, my companion smiled as you noticed our patrons. The spirit joins to a pack or tribe as represent of its inner nature. I went through my dream.
Yeah, we know each other, I said, remembering my dream. We sort of met the other night. The two animals stopped in front of me, in the middle of the path. <coughs> we came here to teach the cubs, said the wolf. She smelled of ash and tears. Was I hallucinating? I couldn't believe what I saw. It made no sense. I felt as if my brain was short-circuiting, trying to interpret signals not meant for human senses. Is it really a wolf? Is it really a weasel? My eyes told me there was a wolf staring at me, but when I looked at it, it felt ash on my tongue. I heard a morning howl so deep it reverberated my bones, and I smelled fire. And when it talked, it was like the rustling of leaves formed words in my mind. They wouldn't leave me alone. But hallucinations or not, just wouldn't leave me alone. The weasel circled me, and before I knew it, I could feel small claws on my leg, and then on my back, and then on my arm. The smell of musk and electricity. It bit my ear. Try not to weasel off my arm. Ooh, a feisty one. I like it. It's a electronic voice I put in my head. Enough, the wolf growled. Or at least that was what my brain decided to hear. But the weasel draw its breath. In the beginning, there was Gaia, aka the Earth Mother. And she gave birth to a mighty breed of warriors, the weasel began. It sounded electronical, like a teenager reading a Wikipedia page over a voice chat. They were called Garu. That's werewolves and werewolfish and their sole purpose was to protect the Gaia. They failed, wailed the wolf. I love the wolf. There was a danger everywhere, shrugged the wolf, when I looked at her for advice. When time began, Gaia released three primal forces upon the earth, the weaver, the wild, and the worm. Uh, the worm. So the weaver is order, the wild is like chaos, the worm is evil and decaying. The wild of, was the untamed force of life and the creation. The cold ruthless weaver gave structure to the world and the worm destroyed what needed to be destroyed, creating balance. creatures the wild, I asked, and an untamed force of life. They were Gaia's children, the wolf snarled, born to herd and contain humans. So what went wrong? I can see that something went wrong, I smiled wryly. The weaver grew too ambitious and trapped the worm within its lifeless web. The weasel answered, confined and denied, the worm slowly went insane. <coughs> the wolf wailed. Now Gaia is dying, choked by the weaver, and eaten alive by the worm, wailed the wolf. And the wild is not the one you should fight, she snarled. You were born to protect it. Then it turned and led the way. It didn't look much different from the other parts of the forest, until you noticed the mounds, that is. There was something about the flattened hills that drew my full attention. So we're in the burrows now. stirred in my mind. No, it wasn't a memory. It was a feeling anchored in my chest, akin to the taste of ash in my mouth, and the smell of smoke, longing, sadness, resignation. But there was more. A sense of sacredness filled me with a calm excitement, and when I closed my eyes, I saw a fire burning in the darkness. Olga kneeled near one of the mounds, put her hand on it, and whispered a few words. I saw the ground open slowly, like a mouth in the earth, I sighed. Let's do this. Put the body in the hole. I took the severed head and the body I'd wrapped up in sheets and put them in the hole. It closed slowly, and I could swear I heard the trees survive, sigh in anticipation. The wolf howled, and I could feel the hair on my hands rise. Welcome to your new life, the talking white weasel grinned. 
We have something else to show you. I ran with the... You're a cub, so you have special privileges, said the weasel. Fusca will grant you a vision. <coughs> you must see to understand, said the wolf. Think carefully before you choose what you see. So we go to the place of power to see the future. Go to the wolf's den to see the present of the forest or the past to find out of their family. <coughs> well, our goal is to find out about our family, so I guess the barrows are the way to go. The tangled paths. It was hard to find the barrows, although I knew where they were. When I looked behind me, the path had disappeared. I felt the Puska playing with me, twisting paths, blocking my way with bushes, dead trees, and then suddenly opening a new path that it was straight and full of sunshine. But I pushed on. Determined, I pushed on. Since the change, I'd become acutely aware of how my body worked and remembered what humans were good at. Running. Stubborn, relentless, long-distance running, not as fast as a deer, not as nimble as a wolf, but steady and without rest. So I ran. Then I was there. The Barrows. I climbed the nearest hill. When I was at the top, I stumbled on something, shaping the grass. A skull watching me from bleached eye sockets. I touched it. The Buried Past. There is a swirl. It starts deep within me, then it expands, everything in motion. And there was no center anymore. See a bird, a forest, a village. A village, I guess. There is a village in the forest, and there is the howl of a wolf. People stop and look around, frightened. The howl is like a keen. The houses are mere huts. There is almost nothing that protects the people from the forest. Their clothes are rags, their feet are bare, their hair long and beards unkempt. There are wolf cubs. <coughs> There are wolf cubs, and there is blood. Then the howling begins, the mournful, blood-curdling keen of a mother who has lost her children. <coughs> Watch, whispers the voice in my head. Watch and remember, but I want to act. But I'm going to just stand by and watch. I want to act. I weigh everything for and against the humans, and I find them guilty. The force listens to me. The forest wakes up, erupts with rage, and powerful furred bodies search the trees toward the village. The humans try to escape. They scream and beg for mercy. They try to protect themselves with fire. I take the fire from their hands. The Gru rise up, their talons red with blood, their eyes glaze with fury, and the fire is yanked from the hands of the villagers and burn their houses. The houses start to burn. The keening turns into a howl of joy. Wolf Mother is happy. I am there from the very beginning. <coughs> the Gru have my eyes and my face. They are my family. I am the blood of their blood. I am part of the story from the very beginning. Okay, so... Her family burned villages for the... For the forest. That's how they served the forest, was like by fighting off humans. <coughs> and I do it again. The Gru have my eyes, my face, they are my family. I am the blood of their blood. I am part of the story from the very beginning. And then it happens again, the humans return. They rebuild the village, this time stronger and better protected. The keening begins once more. Then we, the Garu, come down on them like wolves on the fold. And again, new villages, new fires, more blood. I don't want to do this anymore. I do not want to do this anymore, but the kinning burns again. 
My heart fills with grief and rage, and villages burn, until one day there is only one guru left in the family, and he slays his own kindred and the fed of his first rage. He escapes across the ocean, he serves in the army, he burns villages in Vietnam and Afghanistan, but it just feels different. He never forgives himself. He wants to go back. He tells his granddaughter stories about the forest, but he never goes back. I can't move. I stay there and watch, but I can't move. My throat burns, my stomach in knots. I want to scream, but I have no mouth. I feel the fire, I smell the blood. I smell ash and tears. I see the large ash gray wolf looking straight at me. Her eyes are golden. She weeps. It is in your blood, she says to me. It is your duty. It is you. Come with me, child. Be my fangs and claws. There is no one else to be my cub. Come with me, child. I will nurse you and will lick your wounds. We will kill together. We will feast. We will be merry. The forest will grow. I looked at her. Perhaps for the first time, I saw her for who she was. <coughs> her pelt was marred with fire, her eyes were smoking embers. Ash was falling from her heaving planks. She looked old, ancient, seething with anger. She was the wolf from my vision? She was one of the wolves from my vision, watching my grandfather from the darkness, waiting for the villages to burn. But she was more than that. also the spirit of the forest, the Busca herself, wounded, hurt, violated, and mourning all her children that the humans had killed. At least, that was what I thought when I looked at her. The wolf mother looked back at me, something in her eyes made me realize that she was helping my family for generations, and that my family used to serve her. Join me, she pleaded. Only you can understand. Only you. turned and ran. Step back another and another, I turned and ran. I hope the village was still there. Darkness. One of us. A lone howl pierced the silence like a single ray of moonlight in the darkness. Another one. And another and another. A chorus of voices, triumphant and joyful. I opened my eyes. <laughs> When I opened my eyes, I was in a clearing. Around me, there were wolves. Huge, monstrous wolves howling at the moon. Werewolves just like me. They hit me like a ton of bricks. I was a werewolf just like them. Well, hello there, Olga smiled. Bad man, welcome to the sept. Sept, whatever that meant. Okay, just so you know, I said slowly, I have no idea what a sept is. A little pax, Olga explained. When a pax, you might fight a, a common enemy, they form a sept. So there are two pax there. Well, I guess there must be at least two pax there. <coughs> Wait, Cornell is the other pack, is he? A great gray eyed wolf changed into Cornell, and soon Pat and Kim joined him. We are at the winter weasel pack, said Kim. A white shadow settled on Pat's shoulder. I saw musk and electricity. I looked at Olga. Three of the monstrous wolves chained. Olga and Lisa stood up, human looking again, their clothes rumpled. A yellow eyed wolf by their side turned out to be Daniel. We are, are the pack of the mourning wolf mother, said Olga. They smelled of ash and tears, and for a moment I saw the wolf spirit among them. We are all Gaia's soldiers, said Cornell, and that we have no choice, but we can choose whom we fight alongside. If 
there's a war, I asked, who's winning? At the moment, the worm, Cornell said. The word reeked of decay and burning oil. Mother Earth is sick, dying, and we are doing our best to protect her. I have so many questions. I shook my head. I did hear the moon whispering to me, I asked. Luna gives us rage, that's why she's important, Olga said. And that is why you'll never be able to read to touch silver again. <coughs> you are from all over Europe, I noticed. Is this like a standard for a set? stupid question or a smart one, I looked at Olga. Normally the tribes keep to themselves, Olga grimaced, but we are in a desperate situation and had to form rather unorthodox alliances. There are at least a dozen tribes, Daniel interrupted, and I hope to Maya that you will choose yours wisely. How do spirits work? What about the spirits, I asked. How does that work? The world casts a shadow, and we call it the Umbra, said Lisa. And in every shadow, every living creature, every emotion and idea, every important object exists as a spirit. That's all you need to know at the moment. Do I have to join a pack? Do I have to choose a pack, I asked, just to make sure? No guru can survive on their own, August stated the obvious. You may not like it, but if you want to live, you need to join. need us and our support, and we need you. I summed it up. So, if I get all this right, I've been conscripted into an ancient war against the worm. I said slowly, trying to put it all together. And the moon gave me rage as a weapon, but I must avoid silver. I took a breath. And there's a whole secret world of spirits, I continued. And I have to join a pack and choose a tribe? Exactly, Lisa nodded. As for the tribe, there are two people who could mentor you. Olga is from the Black Furries. An ancient tribe of women warriors, and Cornell is from the Children of Gaia. He's a more peace and harmony guy. Children of Gaia? Black Furries? Yeah, what about my family's tribe? Hey, what about my family's tribe? I asked. Lisa winced. Daniel sighed. Olga shook her head. What's the matter? Your ancestors were of the Get of Fenris, and no one here wants to have anything to do with that tribe, Cornell answered. They stand against everything we believe in. Were they really that bad? They surely aren't, aren't that bad, I asked, are they? Get of Fenris. Werewolf supremacist. Human. Okay, so the Get of Fenris are evil werewolves that. Like, they killed humans and fought other werewolves and. Basically, want to bring the apocalypse. Okay. Get of Fenris are the most radical Garou supremacists that ever marred the face of the earth, Kim scoffed. Like legit fascist werewolves, some of them literally worked for Hitler. Yeah, I can picture that. Thank you for telling me, I said. I have the right to learn where I came from. For a moment, we were all silent. I want to learn more about the tribes and find an option that would really resonate with who I was. Kim have to say. The bo 
Oh, Nars. Urban werewolves fighting for the disadvantaged and the marginalized. Children of the rat. Is a rat as a patron? Sure we do, Kim answered. It's a very good patron. Resilient? You want to be like a rat, always managing, always afloat. We keep talking. That's why the bone gnars protect every single guy as child, no matter how small, because we're all valid. They sighed heavily. Now tell it to the other Garu and they look down on you because you are a bone gnar and they think they are superior. Prejudice, prejudice everywhere. What about you, Lisa? As Lisa with her tribe, she inherited her cyberrack. Hate, sorrow, rage, or deeper than any other tribes. I see Siberian homeland is melting and decaying. Other despised other tribes as half breed owners. She inherited her cyberic legacy from her Buryat grandfather. She said, I don't know what the proper legends, customs, and culture to join. So I asked, it's not sure it's a Cyberic, I mean, you're from Siberia? I hesitated and Lisa smirked. The tribe name reminds me of something. Yes, Cyberic, she pronounced it differently, so it sounded like a Polish word. I must have heard it before. I'm sure that I heard it before, I said, in a different context. In Russian, it means someone from Siberia, but in Polish, it had its own very specific meaning, Lisa explained. It's a word for political prisoners exiled to Siberia. And there were tons of thousands of them. Which meaning she prefer? Which meaning do I identify with? The Polish or Russian, I asked. Lisa smiled. The tribe name describes both of my legacies. My granny was a political exile. My grandpa was a Siberian indigenous. I use it because it speaks the truth. Uh, that's enough from here. Thanks, that's all I need to know at the moment. Pat. That was a glass walker. That will try for anymore. Push up the beaver, at least. Tools to hide. Hate it, hate it. Funny to hand the old ways, at least. Tools to hide. I was a glass walker in her tribe of finding its niche and cutting edge technological cityscapes among strands of the weaver's net. It sounded intriguing. We talked for a while. What are you doing in the forest? Basically, the city dweller observes. All glass walkers are it's our natural habitat. I feel quite out of place in the forest. Fusco is our home. Why? I couldn't understand the Fusca is our home. Maybe your home, she said, and suddenly I realized we had less in common than I thought. More of a city girl, she added. We use the weaver to fight the worm, and the forest is not the weaver's domain. And I happen to be quite fond of humanity. I have great potential. Bring it over. When I stopped asking, I think of what I've learned. I'll spend a point on Daniel, I guess. Daniel played on his tribe, but didn't understand the question. I'm Red Talon. From wild wolves. Most of them hate every given life that are millennia long for against predators and wolves all over the planet. The other tribes hate them because they don't compromise and are blind to the suffering of human and half the guru. But exactly were the Red Talons? What are the Red Talons, I asked Daniel. This is the tribe of Garu who were born as wolves, Daniel explained. We usually don't mix with others, and we kill humans. Since I am the only one here, I decided that was better to jo join the rest. <coughs> it was a wise decision. It's better than have a pack than to be alone, I said. He nodded. There is always strength in numbers. I protect my folk better than there are more werewolves around. Your folk? Wolves. That's all I wanted from him. Just 
too exhausted to bug them with personal questions. There were a lot of werewolves there. They was bugging me, I said. Why are there so many of you here? Suddenly everyone in Biwaveza is a werewolf or what? You know nothing, Cub. Olga laughed bitterly. A mere century ago, there were dozens of packs in these forests. But none of the old guards survived the 90s, Lisa shook her head. We had to start from scratch. Until you showed up, there were only six of us, and the three of us not even local, Cornell pointed out. Two paths too small for their own good. <laughs> anyway, before you're admitted to the tribe, you need to prove yourself. What? Now? Prove myself? I'm shocked. Hadn't I proven myself enough already? Rite of passage. You went through your first change, Pat said. She was leaning on a tree nearby, and you know everything you need to know at the moment. But you have to go through a rite of passage. Daniel rubbed against my leg, excited. A vision quest can wink at me. And since we don't have time for tests, we need you to solve the real problem. Olga stepped in. Namely, we want you to find a way of ending this logging problem, Cornell said gently. So, how would you like to do it? The elk me in anticipation. Took my time. Took my time analyzing the situation I'd found myself in. I changed. I could shift my shape of will. But my mind worked as good as ever. I knew what to do. And I know exactly what I wanted to do. The loggers need to be punished. We find the local source of our problems. We can understand the enemy. We need to understand why the loggers are doing this, I said. Make them change their minds. Can look unconvinced. And the loggers can made a dismissive gesture with their hand. You have to inspire the protesters. These are rolled her eyes. They were all blind. Ignore most powerful ally, Lisa rolled her eyes. There are many ancient spirits in Huska, and we should talk to them. I continued with my plan. There must be someone responsible for the shit in Biobeza. Here at the local level, I continued. I want to have a talk with them. Cornell bared his teeth in a predatory smile. I know exactly who we should talk to. Daniel beamed, spoken like a true Bibodox. Okay, so Bibodox are judges. They want to be balanced between human and wolf. How did he know? Mom always told me that when she gave birth to me, the half moon was shining through the window, reminding her that this too shall pass. I nodded. Garu, born under the half moon, are judges and truth seekers, said Cornell, just like you and me. A worthy pilot ox is an honor personified, added Lisa. <coughs> okay, so my place in werewolf society will be determined by your renown. You can earn glory through defeating mighty enemies and succeeding at dangerous quests. You can earn honor by following your moral imperative and upholding the laws of the Guru. You can earn wisdom by acting efficiently and thinking well before you act. Your renown will change as you play, contributing to Maya's legends among the Guru. No pressure at all, I felt overwhelmed. Olga must have sensed my confusion. Come on now, we have lots to discuss, she patted my shoulder, and we have to find your phone and wallet. So I followed her. Got my playlist on there, don't I? I had to tie up loose ends in my old life. Back to the beginning. I'm sitting on a bus, the sun streaming through the windows is making it hard to see. The narrow road cuts through a dense old forest. My mind wanders. I remember doing something important, walking among the trees, looking for something, losing something I loved, gaining something unwanted. 
But then I'm fully awake and the memories scatter away. We're almost there, says Anya. I did some searching. She looks at me from over her phone. This place is amazing. The last part I went to a forest in Europe. Excited to be here? I know, right? I smile. I can't. I'm not able to finish. I start to cough. I spit blood. My throat is sore. My lungs hurt. Stop the bus. I get up and shove to the driver, but I feel something sticky on my hands and torso. Something stopping me. Spiders! crawling with small spiders, thousands of them, weaving their cobwebs around me, around the seat, around everything. I fight. I try to fight them. They are too small, and there are too many of them. After a few seconds, I'm covered in cobwebs, unable to move. There's a hiss. Then slowly, a long, dark, bloody shape comes out of Anya's eye socket, pushing the eye out black snake that reeks of rotten meat, acid, and oil. Don't fight, Maya. You're already mine, it says, just like your grandpa. And then it kisses me. Well, that must be the, uh, worm they were talking about. How are we doing for time? I don't know, 40 minutes. I'll be able to push it past an hour here. The plan. Loose ends. I woke up in bed in the B&B, and for a moment, I thought the whole werewolf business had been a dream. Then I heard a startled breath. I looked up and saw Anya looking at me with wide eyes. What happened? Where were you? She asked. I was scared shitless. There was so much to talk about. I didn't know where to start. I was worried about her. Are you alright? I asked. I was worried about you. Yeah, said Anya, scratching her head. After we were separated in the forest, I got lost and somehow ended up here. She sighed with relief. She was telling me what she thought was true. She had no recollection of seeing werewolves. So Pat was right. The human mind couldn't cope with seeing a Krinos. And when the delirium ended, the subconscious passed the whole same memory of something rational. But how are you feeling, asked Anya. How was I? I'm alright, sorry for disappearing so suddenly, I said. Because what else could I say? I told a version of the truth. I got lost in the forest. Technically, that part wasn't lying. Then I stumbled on the activist's sand. I kind of got carried away. I wanted to tell her everything. I packed my bag in silence. I felt a rift growing between me and Anya. I felt a sudden urge to tell her everything. But I couldn't. But I wasn't allowed to. I was a guru and had a sacred duty to protect the veil, hiding us from mortal eyes. I sighed and continued packing. So, are you leaving? asked Anya. What about your family history? I don't know how to answer. I shrugged. Whatever the answer was, I was now Maya the werewolf's problem. Maya the student was dead. I'll be in touch. Anya hugged me. He'll figure it out. I sighed and took my bag and left. Everything according to plan. I dropped my bags in the camp and ran through the plan one more time. They expected me to act like a pilot ox, but we also discussed other plans, both more sophisticated. So, Varus for pilot ox justice retribution, Galliard stories propaganda, or fear of spirits rituals. Rare beetles. Oh, I guess Philodox then. Follow the money with Olga's pack, local connections, and Cornell's pack's technological wizardry. 
We followed the money, and we found out who was paying the loggers and security guards. Behind all the ideology and politics, it was just business. We had to stop the money flowing. They were cutting down trees because someone was paying them to do it. We decided to stop the money flowing. Finally, we were ready. After a few days of stakeouts and preparations, we identified our target and were ready to move. We started with the kidnapping. We let him out in the middle of the forest. Before now, I'll take the lead. When I yanked the bag off the man's face, I lifted the flashlight and shined it in his eyes so he couldn't see us. The man reeked of fear and sweat. I knew him, and that was going to be a problem, because the man behind the local logging industry was Bartek's father. That doesn't matter. But our personal connections didn't matter. That night I wasn't the person with a Pilotox guy as justice. The man whimpered and shielded his eyes. It was time to deliver my message. I'll be blunt. Stay away from the forest, I was blunt, or I'll kill you and feed your carcass to the wolves. He almost shat his pants. I could smell it, but he decided to play the tough guy. Fuck off, you bitch, he yelled. I'm going to make your life a fucking misery. Just you wait. I know the chief of the police. I know MPs. You won't get away with this. Who do you think you are? Oh, I'll show you who I am, I said quietly. I felt Colonel tense by my side, but he said nothing, just watched. Take a deep breath. Focus. So it says it looks great on camera. So I want to go full lupus. I'm trying to scare him. down in pain, my arms and legs cracked and twisted, my skull fractured and reset itself in different shape. Fragments of bones crawling under the skin, the skin was rippling and spreading fur, I howled in agony. Pain subsided was lupus, a wolf saving the world, it smells and sounds, and bared my teeth. Down on all fours, growling and baring my teeth, he looked at me, I saw a hit, sudden change in his face. He was no longer afraid, he looked at hatred and disdain in his eyes. A wolf! He said, son, I a dirty flea bag of pest. He spat on the ground. I should have felt like you would have a pet wolf dog. What's that? I grew. A flea bag? I thought as I changed. I was Hispo, a monstrous wolf form. Pain was overwhelming. My spine cracked and twisted, my knees. My ankles broke and I fell on the ground. My jaw shattered and rearranged itself. My whole skin was on fire, rippling and spreading fur. I howled in agony. When I rose, panting and spinning blood, I was his bow with strong paws, mighty jaws, and mane of fur. More than a wolf, scary and monstrous. I bared my teeth at him and growled, and I lunged. He got to his feet and started to run, stumbling in the dark. I was after him. I 
I was after him, enjoying the blood pumping in my veins, the sheer volume of my body, my forepaws on the ground. He screamed at the top of his lungs and collapsed. I was on top of him, and my fangs were inches from his throat. He cried out and he went limp. So he's ready to talk. just the beginning. I grew. My muscles spasmed and rearranged themselves. My jaw cracked and my mouth filled with blood. I clenched my fists and claws, drove into my palms. Panting and whimpering, I changed. <coughs> I was more than human, wolfish and scary. I changed and wrinkled my nose. He lost control of his bladder. Just leave him here, I heard Cornell behind my back. Well, I should teach him. If not, he smiled at me. We'll continue until he learns. It was a long hunt. And I made him sure that it was fair. I let him rest from time to time, but I never let him forget that he was being hunted. I made him run. I made him sweat. I made him fear. I enjoyed the hunt. We enjoyed the hunt, Cornell and I. We made a good team. In the end, the man was cowering on the ground, crying and shaking. I leaned to him. I'm always watching, I growled in his ear. Please don't kill me, he moaned. I'll do whatever you want. I'll tell the people to leave. I'll stop it. Anything. Just don't kill me. We were done. That was all I wanted to hear. Keep your end of the bargain and I'll keep mine. I promised and walked away. I left him in the middle of the forest. I don't understand. Don't they forget everything about werewolves after they see them? So, he wouldn't remember making that deal, would he? A moment of triumph. I couldn't wait for the sept meeting that morning. Punishing the local lobbyist was my rite of passage, and I knew that I did great. I was unstoppable. We met soon after the sunrise, on the same clearing, when I woke up for the first time as Guru. Lisa looked at us all and smiled. Our patrons were looking at her expectantly, so she stepped towards the center of the clearing. I am the Thuridge. Thurage are the ones who deal with spirits and visions. Thurage of this sept, and I'm here to make sure we do things the right way. I hold my breath. She turned to me, and I held my breath. Maya, come forth. Are you a cub who seeks recognition as an adult? She knew that already. I answered. I am, I answered solemnly. Are you an applicant to a tribe? Lisa asked again. I confirmed. I am, I answered. Who speaks for the cub? Lisa looked at her sept mates. I do, Cornell stepped forward. I am blind prophet of the children of Gaia, Philodox of the Winter Weasel Pack. I observe the cub on her mission. I'm here to tell the story. I have taken your name. I guess I all had secret werewolf names I made sense. A new life demanded a new name. But I also have to take a name. Has the cub passed a challenge, asked Lisa? I held my breath. I knew how it all happened, but I held my breath nevertheless. She succeeded, was the answer. The challenge was hard, and she overcame it. Lisa turned to me. Chosen your name, Lisa turned to me. My new secret name? Suddenly I remember my grandfather's talking about his old friends. He never used their real names, they were always Thunder, or Grey, or Needle. I'd always thought it was a guerrilla thing, some kind of war names. Now I wasn't so sure anymore. How to capture my whole life. My aspirations, my personality, my heritage, and one name. I cleared my throat. Mist. A name with more than one meaning. Scala. 
Let's polish a rock. Fine. Three of those. Or falcon. This is Latin for a female. Okay. a sense of stoicism, and so I'll do that. My new name is Scala, a rock, I answered, imagining an anchor that would allow me to give an unbiased judgment. As for the tribe, choosing the tribe was another matter. So I can be a black fairy, uh, Child of Gaia, a glass walker, or Bonar. I like, uh, I'm kind of torn between Child of Gaia or maybe glass walker. I guess I'll do try to guy. After getting to know both Olga and Cornell better, I decided to join the children of Gaia. Cornell agreed to mentor me. Only one thing remained to end the ceremony and make me a full fledged Garu. I had to join a pack. Standing with the morning wolf mother. Does it say? It's cautious. I guess I kind of ran away from her before, so I should try to make amends. I joined Olga's pack and chose the morning wolf mother as my patron, and so it was done. That weasel bit me anyway, so I don't want to join him. According to ancient rites, Lisa painted the mystical glyph of my tribe on my sternum. It disappeared after a moment, and whenever I closed my eyes, I could feel its warmth touch between my breasts. Scala, children of Gaia, Hylodox of the Morning Wolf Mother Pack. Welcome to our sept, she said solemnly. Then she howled. Howls rose toward the sky. I sang about ancient laws of war, status, and secrecy. I remembered only a few. Combat the worm, wherever it dwells, and whenever it breeds. Submit to those of higher station. Respect those beneath you. The veil shall not be lifted. I join the song. I threw my head back and howled with my sept. I was a cub no more. I was ready to tell my own stories. To earn my own place in the pack. How my own songs. timing almost at the uh, full hour mark it's really starting to take off I'm really curious to see where this goes I'm not really familiar with the lore behind the werewolf the whole world franchise of werewolf the apocalypse so it's gonna be an experience for me yeah so I hope you have fun and I'll uh, look forward to finding out more of this in the future. See you later.